Yeah, Tara Hart says what he's making. Hey, Tara. Nice. Welcome. Uh, we are making... Tara Hart says Tara, feel bad, Tara, feel bad, Tara, feel bad, Tara, feel bad. I'd only rendered one of them. Oh, uh, let me boot this up. It'll take like two minutes. I just finished making something. This is like an old TI calculator. Yeah. This will be easier. Oh shoot, I'm out of like USB ports. There we go. Plug it into my laptop. Um. Your heart says, holy smokes, this is wacky. Yeah. <laughs> the setup is, uh, is insane. So, there's a Raspberry Pi in here now. I mean, it's actually out here. And this light is like... I, I'm gonna try and find a way to diffuse this light. But yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. There, there's a the little Pi logo. Um, there's a lot going on. I just got this workbench recently, and I've been like populating it. I want to have all these like previous projects up here. Um, and so I've just been attaching these power connectors to them. So, okay, so this thing's booting up, um, so, okay, then there's the, well, here's a power supply I ripped out of a desktop PC, the, here's the wires coming out of it, super safe, right, and I just plug those into all of the, uh, devices, so, here's one I already did, no, I'm blocking it, if I stand over here, I the mic, just put that on the mic again. Thanks. Okay, so. I'm still kind of in my. There we go. Just plug in ground and 5 volts. And then I plug them into here. Which I don't really have a good way of showing that. And then bam! The power's on. And uh, this light is, I can turn it off. There we go. I don't know if you can hear the beeps, but it's like a little puzzle game. Oh no, I'm giving away the solutions. Anyway, and then if you want to play it just normally, you can just unplug it from here. Oh, can't see it now. <laughs> Thanks. And if you want to play it uh, handheld, you just unplug that, and then it's got the battery in here. Because that was always how it was, is just uh, with a battery. And this thing is thick. <laughs> and if you open this up, there's like so much crap in there. I had, did not know how to um, miniaturize. Okay, this thing's ready. So see how long that took to boot up. It's crazy. So I just uh, run this little script here. Is it working? Yeah, starting. Um, but anyway, I made this like 10 years ago or something, and this one. I keep what on my desk? Hold on. Oh, the Macrolite. I just got that yesterday. <laughs> That's so funny that you know which one that is. Be honest. Are you a crystal girl? <laughs> I don't know. I just like the way it looked. Oh, wow. That's wild. That's so cool. Uh, okay, so here, yeah. If you look at this, I don't have a better way to show. Oh no, I can detach the camera. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I forgot I could do that. Check this out. It's chat on there. <laughs> this is just like command strips to hold everything together. <laughs> no way there it is yes way because <laughs> uh i realized the raspberry pi is just a full computer you can do whatever you want with it <laughs> um, gum, gum. yeah the the tts is not always a oh you're not hearing that well you might be hearing the bleed over but um yeah and it can do whatever because I'm going to have that one right here, um, or here-ish, whatever, and uh, I can just glance over and look at chat. That's the idea. Um, 
but yeah. <laughs> and uh, so right now I'm wiring up these last two. So you can see the stuff was starting out pretty big and thick and whatnot, and then now it's getting smaller and smaller. These are kind of medium sized ones. And then it's getting the smallest. Oh, there's a third one. Oh, this one has USB as well, but anyway. Um, this is my most recent one. Check this out. Oh, there. There's a tiny little switch there. You see that? Uh, you can't read it very well, the, the focus, but whatever. Squeeze to start. And you just squeeze it. And then you can stack them up like that arcade. This has become my new, like, test game, or like, default kind of game because I used to make whack-a-mole but that requires so many buttons this one you just need some sort of display and then one button so there's actually like a physical button in here ah uh, I don't want to open it up because it's I'll open it up thanks yeah I mean I just had all these sitting in a bin being sad I'm opening it up it's just scotch tape I had them all sitting in a bin just being sad there. Um, and now I want them all to be on the wall there so I can be happy when I look at them. Yeah, how it says, I have to wait, wait Boom. This is an Arduino. Um, and then there's the button underneath there. You can kind of see. So when you squeeze it, it just presses. And then uh, the battery. It's two coin cells in a little thingy. And then there's the screen, a little OLED display. 128 by 64 pixels, not bad. Alright. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. But now the problem is uh, I'm not going to have nearly as much uh, cool stuff to show you next time because this is like a decade of... <laughs> of uh, projects, so. Oh, dang it, I folded the tape. There we go. So there we go. Do you have like a PO box or anything? Because I have like a bunch of these. Uh, I could send you one. This, I'll just leave this here. I need, uh, oh, that one's USB. So then I have this, like, USB hub that I just bought, or I don't know if I bought it or someone gave it to me. Ooh, nice. I've tried to send these out, but both of the P.O. boxes were in Canada. Okay, awesome. Um, both of the people I tried to send them to were in Canada, and there was some weird issue and it uh, got returned. So, and one was Mexico. But either way, now this should work because it's inside the U.S., so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm in, like, the D.C. area, so um, it's easy. Or if you ever, like, well, you have a P.O. box, that's easier. But if you ever show up to, like, a con or something. Um, but, like, uh, I'll just send it in the P.O. box. It'll be nice to uh, actually have one work, hopefully. Um, when is that? Isn't that happening, like, really soon? Oh, I went to MAGFest. Uh, this uh, was my first one this year. It's happening now. Okay. Wait, are you there? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I'm i going to Super Smash Con next weekend. I don't even play uh, Smash Bros, but <laughs> I have a friend who's going. Okay. It's kind of um, I don't know I I just I I do enjoy watching it sometimes and I I mean I I used to play just like brawl on the Wii with my family <laughs> I'm not that good at it though I haven't played in years or no I played on the Switch with some friends but it's just like I don't know it was a uh, like I had a friend who's going so it'll be fine anyway. Any questions? <laughs> there will be a quiz later. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to solder these on. So yeah, the thing is with these, they're powered by a battery, right? So it has to have like an on switch. So uh, the key to most of this is Arduino. I don't know if you heard that, which uh, I didn't even have like a normal Arduino sitting around, um, which is this like board that uh, I'll just grab one of the weird ones. It's this board that you, you can buy for a couple bucks. They used to be like 20 bucks, but now you can get these for like $2. Um, and you plug it into like a breadboard and then you plug it into a USB into your computer. And I'll do it, I, I'll do it right now. Say I won't. Uh, I need a, I need a uh, closer USB port. <laughs> and then, okay, I'm sorry chat, I'm shutting the chat down on that device. I need this USB port. And then you open up uh, I'll screen share it. The Arduino IDE. Capture. Select window. This one. Oh, I want to make a new one. Um, okay. Select window. This one. Share that. Full screen it. And then, boom. So I got the software here. And so this, this is uh, like how I learned this stuff. Is like my parents got me an Arduino. And then like, they, I think there was like a book at that point. But you can just go online and whatnot. So, then you read the, the instructions and it'll tell you to do something like um, pin mode 13 output. And what that does is it takes one of these pins on here and sets it to... Uh, be an output. It could be an input to receive like a button press or an output to trigger like an LED or something. And then digital right 13 high. Delay. So this is milliseconds. So delay for one second and then we're going to write it low. So this is just going to go high, low, high, low. I think we got to save it. And uh, this board happens to have an LED connected to pin 13. Is it, uh, okay, done. So there, now you see that little light blinking? Let me go back to OBS. There you go, yeah, high, low, high, low. And then uh, you can grab an LED if you want to make it more prominent. Where is th pin 13 here? 12D13. And then where's ground? It's much harder to see on the uh, thingy. So ground is not nearby, so I will use the uh, breadboard to to move it over. So these have like a pattern on it to to get your signal moving around. And then our ground. So there we go. So now I've plugged in. It's very overexposed when it's on, but an LED that'll light up when uh, when that pin goes high. And so then you take that, and you do 35 of them. There you go. You do 35 of them, <laughs> and then you've got your uh, your thing there. And then uh, the here, here's snake. The thing with that, I forgot it wraps around. Is uh, you don't have 35 of those pins, so you do have to get a little clever. But I won't get into that too much. <laughs> we get a little goofy and wacky from time to time. But you can see, like, right now I just, like, spun this up in uh, less than a minute. or I mean, I don't know, a minute or two. Um, and so, like, this one's a little simpler. This just has nine LEDs. Um... And so here's another the stacker again. Oh, I gotta press the bottom ones. Uh, I'm playing it through OBS, so it's like a bit delay. Excuses, excuses.
But um, nine LEDs and four buttons. Why don't we hook up a button real quick? Oh, that's a switch. Not a button. And there goes the solder. Ooh. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing is like the soldering. You can make these permanent. But anyway, I got about a bajillion of these little buttons. Hold on. And uh, I need more wires. I've got some of this wire. Hold on. So I'll connect. Uh, so this path for the LED goes pin 13 goes to one side of the LED. Ground goes to the other side. So I do the same thing. Ground for one side of the button. And so that this whole rail is ground. It's two next to each other. Ground and 5 volt. And then the other side of the button, we'll just pick one. We'll go D5. Um, and then we go in the software here. Pin mode. 5. Input. Um, and there's some weirdness with this, which I won't go into. Um, this has to do with like the voltages floating and stuff, so we just do input pull up and I'm not gonna explain that right now. So and then uh we can do if digital read uh pin five uh we'll write the LED high, else we'll write it low. I mean, uh, this is like kind of dumb because <laughs> it's like a button that just turns on and off a light when you're holding it. See? Now, actually, it's reversed. So when it reads uh, true from this, that means the button's not pressed. It's just a weird quirk of the, um, the way it reads things. So uh, we can just put a knot here Oop, and upload that. And now it's going to do what you might expect. So that blinking was just it uploading. There. So now it's just that. Now if we wanted to like stay on or something, we can have like a variable. Uh, so Oh, actually, uh, so this will be the button state. Or hold on. Previous button. Yeah. State. So this is a little more complicated. You get into just like some more full on programming. Uh, button state. So we read it, and now we say if button state, if that's true and not previous. I've done this a million times. It's called edge detection. So it's like if it's currently pressed but it wasn't previously pressed. So it's only on the rising edge. Then we're going to like turn on the LED. But then we need an LED state. Uh, so we'll flip the LED state. <laughs> this is more complicated than I anticipated. And then we'll say if LED state. Yeah, we'll just do it like that. That's fine. Yeah, so I think it's uh, press getting multiple presses from the uh, like the the button is like turning on and off really fast. So we'll just add a little delay. This is the dumb way to do it, but it works. I think we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this is just like you play around with this and uh, build up from there. Oh, that's why. Um, I didn't save the previous one. See, live coding is uh, it's difficult. I would not have made that mistake if I was doing this just uh, without talking or 
extremely. Anyway. There we go. You press the button, it turns on or off, it stays that way. And so I actually have that with my uh, lights up here if I press the button. Is anything plugged in? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I press the button, the whole thing turns off. Press it again, it turns on. Uh, and it's the same exact logic. So that's, I, I literally just did that. Um, except that one's running on a Raspberry Pi. And that's kind of the next step in the uh, evolution of these devices is like, it's also really cheap. You can get one for five bucks. That one's ten bucks. Or no, this one's ten bucks. That one's thirty-five. It's got more power. It's a full-on computer. Um, like it runs Linux and everything. So, and I think even you can run Windows on it, but it runs pretty slow. So <laughs> everyone just runs Linux. Um, so yeah, and then you can still do the same kind of stuff with like writing to pins. Which you can't do on a normal laptop or desktop. 